Here is an expanded version of the review script for the HAL Tejas MK2 2025-26 model guest, with 10 additional paragraphs adding more context, technical depth and accessible language, without section titles, so it flows like a continuous narrative. Dash dash dash. When you look at the Tejas MK2 you can immediately see it has grown significantly compared with earlier versions. The fuselage is lengthened, the wingspan is increased and the addition of close coupled canards ahead of the wings gives it a more aggressive and capable silhouette. By increasing the size of the airframe, the designers have created space for more fuel, more weapons and a more powerful engine, so what you're seeing is not just a cosmetic upgrade, but a structural evolution. According to public data the MK2 is expected to see a maximum takeoff weight around 17.5 tons, which is substantially more than the previous MK1, MK1A variants. Under the hood the Tejas MK2 is slated to be powered by the GEF 414 INS 6 turbofan engine producing about 98 kN of thrust. That gives it noticeably more muscle compared to the older F404 engine used in earlier Tejas jets. This extra thrust means the aircraft can accelerate faster, climb higher in less time, sustain higher speeds and carry heavier loads without compromising maneuverability. In layman's terms, it behaves more like a mid-weight fighter rather than just a light combat jet. One of the most exciting upgrades is the avionics suite and sensor package. The Tejas MK2 is expected to receive an indigenous active electronically scanned array AESA radar, the UTAM radar, an infrared search and track IRST system, missile approach warning capability, plus a modern electronic warfare EU suite. What that means for a pilot is far more situational awareness, the jet knows more, sees more, reacts more. From a non-pilot viewpoint, the jet is smarter, which in modern air combat arguably matters as much as being faster. The cockpit of the MK2 has been redesigned with ergonomics and pilot ease in mind. Reports note fewer physical switches, large touchscreen displays, side stick throttle and joystick controls similar to what you see in top global fighters. This shift means the pilot can focus more on flying and fighting rather than managing dozens of knobs and dials. For a viewer or enthusiast, that translates into a slicker, more intuitive interface, less old-school cockpit clutter and more streamlined controls. In terms of performance, publicly available projections indicate a top speed in the range of Mach 1.8 with a combat radius around 1,500 km for standard missions without air refueling, though as always with military projects, official, numbers may evolve. To put that in everyday language, it can fly from one large city to another in under an hour, if conditions permit, strike a target, in return, which gives the aircraft a lot of flexibility for both national defense and strike roles. Payload capacity has also seen a big jump. The MK2 is designed to carry up to approximately 6,500 kilograms of weapons, more hard points, some sources reference 11 weapon stations, and the ability to use heavier standoff weapons. That means it can carry a richer mix of air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground bombs, anti-ship missiles or more fuel tanks, making it a true multi-role platform rather than a niche fighter. For someone watching the video, you can highlight that this jet is meant to do everything, dogfights, strike missions, maritime roles, you name it. Stealth and survivability features have been factored in, too. While it is not a full stealth aircraft, the MK2 will incorporate radar absorbent materials, design tweaks to reduce its radar cross-section and better thermal IR signature management. That means, in plain speak, it is harder for the enemy to spot, track and shoot down, giving the pilot more margin to survive and complete missions. In a video review this is a great point to highlight, stealth doesn't always mean invisible, but, less visible, is a very real advantage. Turning to the all-important timeline, development of the Tejas MK2 is well underway. As of early 2025 assembly of the first prototype is progressing, over 60% complete, and the rollout is expected around late 2025 with a first flight in early 2026-27, and induction into service sometime around 2028 or later. For a viewer this means, it's not yet flying in large numbers, but the countdown is on, and if things go according to plan the next few years will be very important. On the topic of cost and export potential, while no official unit price has been publicly confirmed, the increased capability of the MK2 over earlier Tejas variants implies a higher cost per aircraft. At the same time, the project emphasizes greater indigenous content, targeting 70% or more local parts, which should help reduce dependency on imports and offer competitive pricing for export customers. If you're doing a video, you might say, 
think of it like upgrading from a mid-priced car to a premium one. Same manufacturer, same family, but the spec sheet has grown, so expect the price to reflect that. It's important to be balanced, so let's talk about the challenges. With any advanced fighter development there are risks, integration of high-end avionics and sensors, engine supply chain issues, maturation of new systems, and budget timeline slippages. The MK2 program has already reported delays in rollout compared to earlier plans. For viewers, this means that while the promise is high, the delivery part is always the tricky zone, and defense watchers know that delays are the norm rather than the exception. Finally, what does this all mean for the Indian Air Force, IAF, and aerospace ecosystem? For the IAF, the MK2 offers a path to modernize squadrons with a capable indigenous fighter that can replace older jets. For the aerospace sector, every system, every composite part, every sensor developed for the MK2 helps build skills, jobs and technological base. In video language, this isn't just a jet, it's a symbol of ambition. The Tejas MK the second of May not arrive tomorrow in full numbers, but the era it heralds is the one where Indian fighters are conceived, built and operated at home, and that is a story worth watching. Dash dash dash, if you like, I can pull together a visual storyboard for the video which shots to use when, key overlays, animations etc, or a comparison chart between Tejas MK2 and its global peers, like the F-16, Gripen E. Would you like me to prepare that?